Hey, it's Justin. Phew, pandemics really have a way of sneaking up on you. I've been spending most of my extra time wrapping up the content for our Learning CNC and CAM course. We've had great feedback on it. If you're curious to learn CNC or CAM, this is a great place to get started. Check out the link below and choose the free preview to get started. It felt we were due for an update, so I'm calling this a shop update, which is halfway between a vlog and a shop tour. You know it's been too long when you film multiple shots and then realize your microphone is dead. What I'm doing here is setting up a second side operation for some parts to engrave a logo and drill some holes. These parts were first cut out of full sheets uh, out of Baltic birch, and then we set up the fixture plate that mounts to the CNC, and we can cut the backside really accurately this way. That loud noise you hear in the background is our vacuum that pulls through the fixture plate and creates a suction that keeps the part sucked to the table. To engrave the logo, we're using an Amana RC1102, which is a 90 degree cutter. Typically in plywood, you need two passes, so you'll see that happen here. I think this is about 20,000 RPMs and somewhere around 100 inches per minute. I needed a strange sized box to ship something earlier this week. Instead of buying a pack of 25 of an 8x8x40 box that I may never use the rest of, I made one with our Donek drag knife. I posted that process on Instagram and it seemed quite popular. It's pretty satisfying and this is just one good use for a drag knife. I'm going to do a full tutorial on how to use Fusion 360 to make drag knife operations. It's a little bit tricky to get set up, but once you get it, it's pretty easy to do. Take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications to catch that upcoming video. We do have a partnership with Donick Tools. Use our promo code PDXCNC to get 10% off. They have models that fit quarter and half inch collets and you don't need any type of special machine. Check this out in the link below. So this space over here behind me has, I'm just talking to the camera, sorry. <laughs> this space over here behind me has always been uh, a little bit of a mess. And we actually have more of these little panels and more bins, but just haven't taken the time to put them up. So I'm gonna do that now. We also need to carve a little more better space for our Shapoko and get that going. Obviously this dust collection system on a C stand isn't exactly ideal, so we'll probably get to that soon too, but I'm gonna improve this now. Moving the fire extinguisher over. I think it'll go right in the middle of all this. If you've never used a wall dog before, they're freaking amazing. They're for drywall and they hold 50 pounds a piece. As long as you don't over tighten them. Yeah, they hold a lot. They're pretty great. So you never need to hit a stud in this case. <laughs> Taking this down, put 
putting up another rectangular grid, you need a different tool. Some genius put a Phillips in the center. Oh, I see why. Apparently I wanted a wall dog. Yes. This is totally not gonna work. Guessed wrong. Blocks like a whole row. Just a little to the side. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Can't even see that, right? Much better. Nobody saw that. Let's say that. It's probably less common. Maybe we'll move all the quarter 20 stuff over here. might be wondering why no mask. Well, I'm the last one here, so might as well. Made some pretty good progress here. Obviously we have space to fill in and a weird assortment of some hardware, but that's just part of uh, growing. I'm fine with that. We did go to Chipoco in a partnership with uh, Carbide 3D. So we shall be making content on using this soon. So we, I think in the next week or so, we we'll, should have something new out. Just getting it dialed in. Had a little bit of trouble calibrating, but I think we got that figured out. Need to make like a laptop stand, get rid of the damn rack that continues to exist. What's new back here? Scrap rack still kind of working. It's full at the moment. We have a big pile of stuff we need to get rid of. Bad parts, plywood. Um, what else? CNC is pretty much the same. We haven't really changed anything with this. Been working great. Just took off the fixture plate and the swell boards over there. The tilt cart. Main workbench area is pretty much the same. I'm not sure if I showed these. We made some little hangers for our portable trim routers. It's worked pretty nice. Just some plywood with, uh, they're painted black and attached to the bottom of that tool cabinet. Got tools kind of uh, hidden around, which is nice. Just on French cleats. Did get a new sign, courtesy of my wife, if you can see that at all. As a gift, it's pretty sweet. Still loving the little microscope. Um, probably use it three to five times a week, depending on what we're cutting. It's really made understanding our tool edges and what they're like. You can't really see with the naked eye, especially if you're cutting something like UHMW. Sometimes it's just scratched up and you can't tell until you look under the microscope. So that's been really nice. CNC cart still doing pretty well. Liking that. Thinking about adding some more tools soon. Did pick up this little fast cap holster that replaced the uh, TIE Fighter. It's a little more smooth to put in and out. This has been amazing for us. Well, we called it the cam station. We haven't yet made it a cam station, but it's been really nice. Really sturdy, one nice place to set up your tools right next to all our CNC tools. It's not usually this clean. I cleaned up a little bit, but I picked up this little silicone mat. I think it's for dog, dog dishes. That's what I'm trying to say. Because when we're cleaning tools, you need somewhere to do that dirty work. You used to use like paper towels and that always kind of soaks through, which is why you see this being a nice mess. 
it should contain all the gross cleaning stuff right where there is. Mercura sanding disc rack, as you can tell it's yellow so you don't get confused with the fest tool and the little square rectangular fest tool one still over here. And we've got some discs for the old sander that we don't use anymore because the Merc is ungodly good. If you have something you'd like to see us cover in the Shapoko, uh, let me know in the comments below. I definitely am curious to see what you all are interested in us going through there. I have a lot of ideas, but always interested to see what people are curious to learn. So try to obviously go through how we use Fusion um, normally, but adapt that to the Shapoko. Been playing around with that a bit, and it's already been pretty exciting and fun to try something different. You might have seen that Fusion 360 has changed its free or personal license policies. More or less, this was an effort to curb the free use for commercial gain abuse. If this is news to you, don't panic. There still is a free account. If you're a hobbyist, most likely this won't affect you much. Go check out the article on our website that covers the changes. Do that soon. Some of the changes have already gone into effect October 1st, and there's a sale currently if you want to upgrade. Again, links to all that in the description below. Hey, we've got something new. If you wanted to support the channel, but don't want a Patreon-like subscription, Buy Me A Coffee is the perfect option. The idea of Buy Me A Coffee is to offer someone a cash equivalent of buying them a drink as a thank you. It's a one-time thing to show your support for the channel and keeps the content and coffee flowing. Look for the link below for Buy Me A Coffee. If you want to get our CAD and CAM models that we show in the videos, subscribe to our Patreon at cnc.money. Thanks!